Radeon Vega reveals five things you need to know about AMD's cutting edge graphics cards. Since uh, NVIDIA didn't show the, not the 1080 Ti like everyone assumed and all the leaks speculated they were going to do, and Vega is kind of a paper launch right now in the sense of we know it's coming, they've talked a little bit about it, but there's no hard release date, no hard price, or even a picture of the graphics card itself, but you can see the chip. So that's probably why NVIDIA didn't show off the 1080. They knew like, uh, we're going to hold off a little longer and see what AMD drops. And they're probably going to price the 1080 to be competitive with Vega. But will that be enough, according to this article? So please forgive me for wasting that much of your time. Let's get right to this. Wait for Vega for the past six months has been the message from Radeon Faithfuls as NVIDIA's beastly 1070 1080 stomped AMD's Radeon RX 400 series graphics card. In fact, wait for Vega is what many of us in the PC world said because frankly, the 10 series was overpriced and anyone who wasn't a just full-blown fanboy of NVIDIA knew the 10 series is overpriced and either A didn't buy into it or B begrudgingly bought into it and then later was screwed over by you know EVGA's uh, VRAM cooking itself fiasco forgive me once again I'm out of place while NVIDIA's powerful new 16 nanometer Pascal GPU architecture scales all the way to the lowly $120 uh, 1050 GTX 1050 which isn't true uh, it's hard to find a GTX 1050 at $120 but I guess that's the MSRP even though technically we're all looking at around $150 to $170 for a fucking 1050 but you know I digress to the mighty $1200 GTX Titan X AMD's 14 nanometer Polaris graphics are designed for more mainstream video cards and the flagship Radeon RX 480 is no match for Nvidia's higher end brawlers. Thus, Wait for Vega has become the rallying cry for AMD supporters with a thirst for face melting gameplay. Vega began the code name of the new enthusiast class 14 nanometer Radeon graphics teased on AMD's roadmap for early 2017, which we are currently waiting at now. Unfortunately, the wait will continue as the new architecture won't appear in shipping cards until sometime later in the first half of 2017. But at CES, Vega is becoming more than a mere code name. AMD is finally revealing some technical teases for Radeon's performance focus response to Nvidia's Titan, including how the new GPU intertwines graphical performance and memory architecture in radical new ways. Before we dive in too deeply, here's the highlight overview of Vega's architecture preview. All those worlds will become meaningful in time. Let's start with what you want to hear about first. And first of all, damn it's fast. As the author has written and obviously seen, I have not witnessed with my own eyes. In a preview shown to gerbil gerbilist, in a preview shown to journalist and analyst in December, AMD played 2016 Sublime Doom on the early Radeon 10 graphics card with everything cranked out to ultra and 4K resolution. Doom scales like a champ, but it's hell on any graphics card. Even the 1080 can't hit 60 frames per second average at those settings. Per tech spot, I'll provide a link obviously, Radeon Vega meanwhile floated between 60 and 70 FPS. Yes, it was running in Vulkan, a graphics API which favors Radeon cards in Doom rather than DirectX 11, but Hot damn, the demo was impressive. A couple of other sightings in recent weeks confirmed Vega's speed. At the New Horizon livestream that introduced AMD's Ryzen CPU to the world, the company showed Star Wars Battlefront running on PC that pairs Ryzen with Vega. The duo maxed out 4K monitor 60Hz speed with everything cranked to ultra. The 1080 on the other hand hits just shy of 50 FPS. Once again, the tech spot link will be provided. Meanwhile, a since deleted leak in the Ashes of Singularity database in early December showed that a GPU with device ID 687FC1 surpassing many GTX 1080s and benchmarks results. However, the twist, the device ID shown in the framework overlay during AMD's recent Vega preview with Doom confirms that Vega 10 is indeed the 67F C1. These numbers come with all sorts of caveats. Vega 10 isn't in the final form yet. We don't know whether the graphics card AMD tested is Vega's beefiest incarnation. All three of those benchmark games heavily favor Radeon. But all that said, Vega certainly looks competitive on the graphics performance front. 
partially because AMD designed Vega to work smarter, not just harder. That's a, a quote from DuckTales with Scrooge McDuck. It's probably before your time. Moving the right data at the right time and working on it the right way was a major goal for the team, according to Mike Manta, an AMD corporate fellow focused on graphics and parallel compute architecture. And a large part of that stems from trying graphics processes more closely with Vega's radical memory design. Now we move on to the memory. When it comes to onboard memory, Vega is downright revolutionary, just like its predecessor. AMD's current high-end graphics card, the Radon Fury series, brought cutting-edge high bandwidth memory to the world. Vega carries on the torch with improving the next-gen HBM2, bolstered by a new high-bandwidth catch controller introduced by AMD. Technical limitations limited the first generation of HBM to a mere 4 gigabytes of capacity, which in turn limited the Fury series to 4 gigabytes of onboard RAM. Thankfully, HBM's raw speed hid the flaw in the vast majority of games, but now HBM2 tosses those shackles by the wayside. AMD hasn't officially confirmed Vega's capacity, but the overlay during the Doom demo revealed a particular graphics card packed with 8 gigabytes of RAM, and that super fast RAM is getting even faster. With Andy's Joe Macri stating that HBM2 offers twice the bandwidth per pin of HBM1. But as it turns out, HBM was just the beginning. It's an evolutionary technology we can take through time, make it bigger, faster, make all these key improvements, said Macri, a driving force behind HBM's creation. Vega builds on HBM's shoulders with the introduction of a new high bandwidth catch and high bandwidth catch controller, which combines to form what Radeon boss Raja Kuduri calls the world's most scalable GPU memory architecture. AMD crafted Vega's high bandwidth memory architecture to help propel memory design forward in the world where sheer graphics performance keeps improving by leaps and bounds, but the memory capacities and capabilities have remained relatively static. The HB catch replaces the graphical card's traditional frame buffers. While HBM catch controllers provides fine grain control over data and support a whopping 512 terabytes not gigabytes, terabytes, of virtual address space. Vega's HBM design can expand graphics memory beyond the onboard RAM to a more heterogeneous memory system capable of managing several memory sources at once. That's likely the biggest impact on professional applications such as the new Radeon Instinct lineup or the cutting edge Radeon Pro SSG card. The graph high capacity NAND memory directed to its graphical processor this will allow us to connect terabytes of memory to the GPU, David Waters, AMD's head of Industry Alliance, told PC World when the Radeon Pro SSG was revealed and this new catch and controller architecture designed for the HBM's blazing fast speeds should supercharge those compatibilities even more. To drive the potential benefits home, AMD revealed a photorealistic recreation of Markia's home. The 600 gigabyte scene normally takes hours to render, but the combined prowess of Vega's prowess and the new HBM2 architecture pumps it out in a mere minutes. AMD even allowed journalists to move the camera around the room in real time, albeit somewhat sluggishly, it was an eye-opening demo. Coterie stressed that the game can also benefit from high bandwidth catch controllers, fine-grained dynamic data management, citing Witcher 3 and Fallout 4, each of which actually uses less than half the memory allocated by the game when they are running at 4K resolution. And those are well-optimized games, he said. I wouldn't say that about Fallout. Memory demands are only getting greedier in high-profile games, and doubly so that bleeding-edge resolutions Here's hoping that HBM's catch finer controller paired with HBM's sheer speed and other tweaks we'll discuss later in the article alleviates that somewhat. AMD also says that the future generations of games could take advantage of high bandwidth memory design to upload large data sets directly to the graphical processor rather than handling it with a more hands-on approach as done today. Three is effective pipeline management. The way graphics cards render games isn't very efficient. Case in point, the below scene from Deus Ex Mankind Divided, it's packed with a whopping 220 million polygons according to Kadori, but only 2 million or so are actually visible to the player. Enter Vega's new programmable geometry pipeline. Rendering a scene is a multi-step process 
with graphics cards processing vertex shaders before passing the information onto the geometry engine for an additional work. Vega speeds things up with the help of primitive shaders that quickly identify the polygons that aren't visible to the player so that the geometry engine doesn't waste time on them. Yay, efficiency! <laughs> Vega blazes through the information at twice the peak throughput of its predecessor and includes a new intelligent workgroup distributor with improved task load balancing from the very beginning of the pipeline. These tweaks drive home how AMD's infiltration in consoles can benefit PC gamers too. The inspiration for load balancing tweaks came from console developers used to working closer to the metal than PC developers who highlight it as a potential area for improvement for AMD's, Maja Kuduri says. 4 is the right task at the right time. AMD designed Vega to smartly schedule past the work that doesn't have to be done according to Mike Mantor. The final tidbits made public by the company drive that home. Vega continues AMD's multi-year push to reduce memory bandwidth consumptions, a quest that NVIDIA has also embarked upon. Its next-gen pixel engine includes a draw stream binning rasterizer that improves performance and saves power by teaming with the high bandwidth catch controller to more efficiently process a scene. After the geometry engine performance already reduced amount of work, Vega identifies the overlapping pixels that won't be seen by the user and thus doesn't need to be rendered. The GPU then discards those pixels rather than waste time rendering them. The draw stream binning rasterizer designs lets us visit a pixel to be rendered only once according to Mentor. The revamping Vega architecture also now feeds render backends from the pixel engine into a larger shader L2 catch rather than pumping them directly into the memory controller, AMD says. That should help improve performance in the GPU compute allocations that rely on deferring shaders. For a fine overall on the topic, check the Extreme Tech article on how L1 and L2 catches work. I will add a link to that as well. The Next Gen Computing Engine Finally, AMD T's Vega's Next Gen Compute Engine, which is capable of 512 8-bit operations per clock at 256 16-bit operations per clock and 128-bit 32-bit operations per clock. The 8 and 16-bit ops mostly matter for machine learning compute versions. The other GPU compute task, though, Kuduri says, the 16-bit ops can come in handy for certain gaming tasks that require less stringent accuracy as well. The AMD-powered PlayStation 4 Pro also supports 256 16-bit operations per clock. Coincidentally enough, the Vega NCU can perform two 16-bit ops simultaneously doubled up and scheduled together. This wasn't possible in previous AMD GPUs, Kuduri says. Vega's next-gen compute unit has been optimized for the GPU higher clock speeds and higher instructions per cycle, though AMD has declined to disclose the core clock speeds for Vega just yet. And lastly, waiting for Vega. The wait for Vega continues, but now we have some idea of the ace hidden up Radeon Technologies group's sleeve. These technical teases provide just enough of a glimpse to wet the whistle of the graphical enthusiast while revealing tantalizingly little in the way of hard news relating to the consumer-focused Vega graphics card. AMD doesn't want to show its hand to NVIDIA too much, after all. It's clear that AMD is attempting some nifty new tweaks to improve the efficiency of the potential of Vega, both in games and professional uses. Nitty-gritty details are sure to drip drop out over the coming months. Fingers crossed that Vega comes sooner rather than later. However, AMD's teased its 14 nanometer Polaris GPU architecture at CES 2016, but failed to actually launch the Radeon 480 until the very end of June. Vega's been slapped with the release window sometime in the first half of 2017. So if AMD waits until E3 to launch its new generation of enthusiast class graphic cards, NVIDIA's beastly GTX 1080 will have already been in the streets for a full year. Vega looks awfully damned intriguing, but even the most die-hard Radeon loyalists can only wait for so long to build a new rig, especially if AMD's much-hyped Ryzen processor launching very, very soon. Please forgive me for this egregiously long video but I figured this was worthy of uh, running past you since 
you know CES for many of us we we're hoping you know there'd be a bit more we we're I know I was hoping to hear something a bit more about AMD's Vega and technically AMD has delivered I knew it would be a paper launch of sorts the big disappointment was Nvidia putting out absolutely nothing about the 1080 Ti but I guess they're honest to God worried what AMD has to offer as they should be from just reading this the fact that uh, NVIDIA is focusing on smart cars. I could get into that on my personal views of that. It, it scares me. Smart cars in 2018. Just a little bit. Please forgive me here. But smart cars are something that the government in America wants to push for 2018. All cars made in that time should be smart cars. And they want the smart cars to communicate with each other and so on and so forth. Which I think is very invasive. Imagine the level of tickets they could give you if like the government knew just how fast you were actually going in an area Well, you were five miles over the speed limit for 30 feet. Here's a ticket, but you know I digress. That's not the point of this video I am actually very 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 interested in AMD. I do own AMD rigs. Well, I own one and the other one I gave to my mother um, But I have become very jaded with Nvidia and their business practices and Vega seems to be something I am personally looking forward to and hoping truly 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 delivers because I am willing to jump ship well I've made this video far too long I apologize it again don't forget to rate comment subscribe thank you as always for tuning into my channel I have a ton of links if you care you can click them if not don't worry about it I'm not gonna twist your arm like everyone else and I will see you guys later adios pichachos why do I why would I say see you later if I'm gonna go into adios pichachos it's the same fucking thing someone slap me